Um, yeah, so to me, I think you got to start with the new player, Muyumba. Um, and the question, you know, we obviously didn't know what we were getting when he came in, but it, it, on the little bit <clears throat> that we talked about in the highlights, right, we sort of said that he looked like an all-action kind of guy and not really a defensive midfielder, and he clearly is an all-action kind of guy, yeah. right? He is... He is terrific energy, right? He has good, you know, skills, good with both really feet. He can skills. find the right guy, right? But and, and he is all over the field, right? And to be honest, you know, we maybe needed that, you know, in this system as a guy just, you know, charging around. Now, you know, to be honest, you know, that reminds you a little bit of Abara. Abara was more mm-hmm. disciplined than that. But um, you know, the thing about it is when you have a guy like that right the problem is you know pineda is calling that a double pivot that is not a double pivot he is not a tactical anything right because he is so all over the field like you know for example i noted in the first two minutes right of the seattle game right it's our first mls game you know with muyumba right and he is running into the box at the far post Right, which is great. You know, look, yeah. you'd love to have a guy making a run of the far post. But if you have, you know, that guy has a defensive responsibility, right? You know, that's a double pivot is basically one guy forward, one guy back, right? And so you might say, look, he's the guy forward, the other guy back, but that's really far forward. Yeah. When you're talking about a double pivot, you're not typically talking about a guy ending up at the far post in the six yard box. Because when you make that run in the six yard box in the far post, there's a good chance that the ball gets cut out before it ever gets to you, right? And that means that, I mean, you're in no man's land. You can't help that entire next attack against you as counter, and you're never going to be in that play. So, um, you know, that strikes me as dangerous, right? So if you're going to do that, you've got to have the other double pivot or really another guy who's really tactically sitting at home because otherwise it becomes chaos, right? Who's who's even marking who, right? And so to me, what's interesting is, you know, it's been Jose too. And I said this right along. I said, my worry about Pineda was that if he plays Muyumba, he should play him with Soso or a Barra or a defensive kind of guy. And instead he's going to see it as that's, you know, whatever. And he's going to play him with either yeah. Sadik or Jose too. And to me, the problem I have with that is, you know, against a good midfield, particularly a good midfielder or a team that's playing three in the midfield, like we're going to get overrun. I would, to be honest, a little surprised that Seattle didn't overrun us because I think yeah, they have a good midfield. Two good teams now with, with yeah. Zetu and Moyama in the center, right? And so Nashville's one of the best defensive teams in the, the league, right? Yeah. Um, and yeah, Mukhtar's, you know, Got shut down by Huzetu the other night. But, you know, one of the things I, you know, you saw, like, so in the 49th minute in, you know, in the Seattle game, right, we're up, right, in the 49th minute, I can't remember which Seattle player it was, but he got the ball out of the back, and he literally, there was a Seattle player who literally dribbled, it was 40, 45 yards straight up the middle, and nobody made a challenge, okay. right? And, you know, it didn't happen very much, and we didn't get overrun in the midfield. But when you see something like that, I mean, when's the last time yeah. you saw a really good midfield? I don't know who you think is a good mid- defensive midfield team, but have a guy run 45 yards up the middle without anybody even coming to make a challenge. Yeah. And you figure that, uh, you know, maybe we've caught some people flat-footed, you know, not expecting what we're doing, maybe we've been on the front foot. Um, I would argue that one of the things about this system, so my problem with it is, so if you do that, right, if you have an amazing back four, I mean, an amazing back four, I mean, there are times, for example, that Man City has had that many players forward, but they have really strong backs, right? I think our back four is really good, but defensively, I would not call it an amazing back four. And typically it's a back three because one of them are forward. I like the fact, we've talked about it already in this podcast. I love the fact that it's not both of them airplaning up. Yeah. So we typically have three in the back. But even when we have three in the back, you know, we've noticed there are a couple of times that Lennon was forward and uh, Robinson's responsible for getting out there and he wasn't all the way out there. So they're getting that easy ball out there. There was one time in the game against Seattle where 
um, Wiley was forward and it was Jose who had to go and cover him behind him. So there've been some, some warning signs that that, that spot is open. And if you had that spot is open and you have a guy who has time in the midfield to find it, right? I mean, you noticed it, it happened against when we played Miami in the league's cup, Messi dropped a little bit deep into our midfield, right? And we were like, the back line didn't know where to go with him, whether or not Parata was like, and this is why Parata got benched. Parata didn't know where to go. And then finally he was, because he didn't want to go with Messi and get burned, but then he was like hanging back. And they finally decided to go and he went too late. Messi got the ball turned, sprayed it out wide, and just ran right by him, got it back and scored, right? So um, that's the danger. Right. If you have that open guy running and they, they can spray it out wide because they're going to have that guy out wide open, that still looks to me, you know, I feel like in, you know, I, I'm, I'm really enthusiastic that we won these two games and, you know, I'm high on the new players and maybe that's enough to push us over the edge. We're, we're going to talk a little bit more about the new players, but I feel like with what we're going on, we're one bad goal away from being out of the playoffs kind of thing. Now I think maybe at least I'm thinking playoffs now. So. Yeah. And I I will say, I think my, my tune has changed in terms of where we're going to end the season. I think I always said six or seven was my original prediction. Then we did the, the, the check-in and during the game, I think I told you, I think we're going to be fourth or fifth at this point, just given the chemistry of this team seeming to want to play with each other. Um, we have a very tough run in our next games. We got Cincinnati twice. We have Philadelphia. We have Columbus, right? Yeah. These are the but best teams. The, in last, all the last two games are tough, right? So yeah, they are good teams. So uh, sure. let's talk about the Seattle game. Yep. So we go on a, you know, on the road after, you know, a pretty disheartening fallout in the league's cup. Uh, we've got some fresh faces and Moyamba kind of was, uh, I think he played in the league's cup one, one or two games, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. So he we played, he, he got a little comfortable and then, uh, you know, we got to see Silva in that Seattle game as well. Correct. And yep. this is the game. I believe Yakamaki's had a brace. Yep. And Almada played fantastic yet again. Yeah. So what I was going to say, my cousin who's in the uh, Seattle supporter section, I was texting with him before the game and, you know, it was a late game here <laughs> so I had to stay up late. But anyway, the, um, you know, I was saying to him that, look, you know, I thought that, that they were going to have the advantage because, um, you know, I said, look, we're really dangerous offensively. In particular, we tend to have um, Gigi and Almada, and that's our that's our thing. And that's how we scored the goals. It was Almada and Gigi. Right. Um, but I said, look, you know, even after we got up in that game, I was texting him. He was in the stands and I said, look, don't worry. We're going to give up some soft goals. Right. And to be fair, Seattle had a couple of phenomenal chances that they yeah. should have finished, right? That game really, to be, to be completely frank, should have been 2-2, but right? I don't, know. I don't know about that. I felt like Atlanta just played way better. They deserved the win in that game. They may, there may have been some chances for Seattle, but at the end of the day, when you look at that game, no. Atlanta looked pretty damn sharp. We were knocking. We looked sharp, particularly in the, in the first half. We were, sure. yeah, we were, yeah, definitely in the first half. I agree, and and we were just moving the ball around with speed and purpose. And you know, I was like, wow, we're not watching, you know, a typical MLS game where it's, you know, difficult to watch sometimes after you watch some EPL. <laughs> like I felt like we were playing at that level, right, where you expect the MLS team to be, you know, like a, you know, you know. Bournemouth or something like that, even though, yep. even though MLS got ranked 29th in the world rankings of all leagues, but, <laughs> yeah. uh, but I yeah, look, I was just happy to see crisp, crisp soccer when yeah, I tuned sure. in to Seattle, especially late at 10 30 on was it Sunday night or whatever it was. Uh, yep. And I was happy. And that's what, that's what I'm hoping we're going to the game on Wednesday again. Like I'm actually finally happy the last two games watching Atlanta United soccer again. That to me is the big takeaway. Uh, I felt like in the Seattle game, we played well, but really the big chances came from sort of like set piece, you know, Amada to Gigi or whatever. I didn't feel like we were just flat out opening them up so much in the Nashville game. On the other hand, I mean, we opened them up. Yeah. But routinely, it, it, time the Seattle time. game was always going to be hard, right? You got Pineda against his old protege well, and, and on the road, on the road. And, you know, 
again, you're traveling after a disheartening tournament. I mean, we're going to have to kill our formula, right? Because yeah. Pineda never wins on the road yeah. against a good team. So right? that destroys the formula. And yeah, in terms of formula, what, like if we win against Cincinnati, right. Which also would destroy the formula too, because Cincinnati is enough. Well, what we have said in the past is that home, even against good teams is a tie, even under Pineda. Yeah. And it's just on the road against good teams is a loss. So you would have said, the formula before all this happened would have said Cincinnati at home was a tie. Mm -hmm. 